Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's look at a brand new way to use dynamic text in Kden Live and how you can maximize your time and get a lot more work done in the process. And if you like Kden Live and you want to find out about best practice configuration and getting your feet underneath you for starting for using that tool, I do have a book available for $5 out there as an ebook. It's called Every Tool You Need for Content Creation for Free. It of course includes way more than just Kden Live. It includes a whole repertoire of tools you can use to get started on content creation. But the hard facts of setting up Kden Live are all there. Go check it out. Again, it's $4.99, $5 US, and I really appreciate you taking a look. Thank you so much. All right, so looking at Kden Live, one of the things I've been talked about in the past is something called the dynamic text effect. And this can be useful as in the context of you can dynamically pull attributes or bits of metadata from the video file itself into the video. And I was describing this as something you could use to help you keep track of cuts and clips, timestamps and things. There's different things you can do. I'm just gonna change the color so you can better see it. But you can see it in the upper left-hand corner. There are a lot of customizations. First off, with where this can land, uh, you can see where the alignment needs to be, vertical and, and horizontal. Uh, so you can play a little bit with that depending on how you want that to appear and what's easiest to see. You can also change the color like I just did, the background color. You can apply an outline color if you really want to and style it a little bit to give it a little more snazz. Just change the font. The reason that's important is that you can actually edit these attributes to your advantage. Now, to show you a little bit what's behind the scenes here, they start you off with time code. I'm going to get rid of that just for a moment. And I'm going to go in here and pull in. We had looked at things like the file date. That's useful because you can get an idea of when the file was created if you want to keep track of shots. But what if you wanted to put something that's a little bit more customized? A message you wanted to put in, a special note to help you distinguish one from the other, or a message you wanted to inject per clip into the video. Well, there's actually a way to do that. And to show you what I'm talking about, first of all, these different metadata attributes, you can kind of sort of see if you go look at a file, and this is pretty similar whether you're working on Windows or Linux. I'm on Linux, so this is very similar, a little bit different in Windows. But if I right click on a given file, a video file, go to properties. In Linux case, there's an audio video, but I believe there's a similar tab in Windows where you can see just some of the general properties. And we can kind of see, okay, well, there's a field for title. It usually borrows the name of the file, the artist, the album. There's a field for comment. And this is the one I want to focus on. There is no good way to edit this really out here. So there's a couple different ways, and I just want to take you through them quickly on how you can do this. All right, one way is if you open it with a tool called VLC. And VLC is free and open source. It's available, it's been available a long time. It does a lot of different things. It has a good reputation as a file player. Uh, so you may know it for that. But it also does many other hidden things. And one of them is the ability to edit the metadata. If I go into tools and media information, all right, you'll see that I get some of these fields including the comments. So what I could do is right here, I can type in a new message and then I just need to click save at the bottom here. And to prove that this has actually done something, I am going to close out. And now we're gonna do the same thing. Right click it, go to properties, look at the audio video, and you can now see that that is now a piece of metadata. It's an attribute of this file. So, so I'm going to come back over here to Kden Live, and let's look at that particular file. So this is the one here, and I'm going to bring that dynamic text effect on, and we're going to, again, get rid of time code and replace that with comment, source comment. Now, I do need to take a second here and just, again, make this easier to see, similar to what I just did with that exercise, and, of course, bring the scrubber so we can see it. And there is the message. And I do have the ability, again, to style this a little bit, depending on what I've got set up, which fonts are at my disposal. We can change that. We can change some of the text effects, the overall size, where it falls. Even in the center of the screen, you can use this dynamically to bring in 
stuff from the file. Now that can save you a lot of time if you're reviewing your clips first and you set this up ahead of time, and then all you need to do is really bring in the effect, and you can reuse the effect, by the way. What I can do is, even though I've partially set this one up a certain way, I could very easily get rid of it, and then come here and drag that over. Now this one does not have a comment yet, but to prove that this works, what we can do is the same thing. We can go back to VLC, and edit the other one, I did bottom one, same thing, go to Tools, Media Information, and I can put a new message there, even while the clip is in my project, don't even have to close it out. All right, that's done, and then hop back over to Kaden Live, and you can already see it just popped right in there. So I can even edit that right alongside this if I wanted to and had a need to. Now, that's fine in the case of where I just have a handful of clips and you can use that and borrow the effect. That's beautiful. You may have a lot of different clips and that gets a little trickier because you may not want to edit them one by one inside of VLC. Although that is a good way to manage it because the message is likely going to be slightly unique at least between clip to clip. But if you have a series of shots, let's just say, that are similar, that vary with with a small difference. Let's just say a number in them changes, but the message is very similar. Well, there's common ways to do that, and you can do that actually with a tool called Atomic Parsley. So it runs on Windows, on Linux, and Mac. It's very flexible, and it runs in command line. So there are some things just to get used to, not to get too deep into this, but this is how you would do a bulk update if this is the kind of thing you're looking to do. And this, by the way, is geared towards Linux. There's a slight variance when you're going to look at it in Windows, um, mostly in the way that you declare what's called a variable. So right now I am just looking at Linux and Terminal, all right? But it's not that far off for Windows. What's happening here is that we have a simple loop. I am going to point the command prompt, and this is an everyday thing when you're using command prompt, uh, to the directory I'm working in. I'm going to point it to here where my files are, all right? And that's important because I want to do every single one in one big sweep. So I'm going to change my directory to this area, and everything is case sensitive. And then from here, I, I don't have to put any file names in because it's doing a wild lookup on anything that's an MP4 in this case. If you have a different video fo format, just make sure yeah, that's updated. I am changing the comment on all of them to this is a test space. And then I'm putting a variable in here that does some simple math. Every time it passes through, and it'll do this for each file. So as it comes through, it will remember, okay, right now it's zero. So I'm going to say zero plus one equals one. Next pass, one plus one equals two. So it'll dynamically increment that. And then lastly, it's just appending that message, the text with whatever number. And that helps me to kind of ratchet through these and get it done. And also, Overwrite is important because that is taking the file in place, so to say, and updating it. There are ways to do a similar thing with FFmpeg, which is another fantastic video and media tool, but it requires you to generate a secondary file, and, and that's just a little too messy for me. So this tool will do it in place, and that saves a lot of time in processing and overhead. All right, so I'm going to copy all that as it is. Make sure you keep the line breaks. I'm going to paste it over here in terminal now that I'm in the directory and run it. And it's that quick. And first off, we can go and see by looking at the properties that that did take effect. And it did apply. Same thing here. And then let's go into the project. Again, I don't have to close anything out. And you can see how that went into effect. So this is a very powerful example of how you can use dynamic text, update it in either a bulk sense or on a singular sense, but you can leverage that for both your workflow, your record keeping, and also just as a piece of how you're going to construct and tell a story in the video in Caden Live. I just thought that was such an interesting way to use dynamic text. I hope that's helpful. If it's interesting, give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe if you haven't done that already and leave a comment, ask a question, and I'll be happy to try to point you in the right way. I'll see you at the next video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and be a part of this experience and support me that way.